I'm so eager to join me for another review on the side. And that's if you're new here, this is your review. I'll never forget. So, um, that's all. on the book and you probably should look it up on your own as well but I guess my reviews will give you a really good idea of some books you might just want to try out so definitely go and catch up on the reads that you haven't watched on my channel and for all of you who are just sitting here watching me ramble on and on without end it's going to come to an end right now because we're going to jump into this month's review of The Light in Hidden Places by Sharon Cameron right now. So we are back with this month's review of The Light in the Hidden Places by Sharon Cameron. First, I want to tell you that this book has almost a 4.6 star rating on Goodreads. That's like unheard of for a young adult book of this age. It's pretty new, actually. This, I believe, is 2020. So this is a pretty new book. So I definitely didn't expect it to have a like awesome review. It's 2020 guys. So definitely go pick this one up. It's a historical fiction. It doesn't have any like romance in it, which I read a lot of historical fictions with romance, but this is a young adult historical fiction, fact-based, true story um, type of a read. So definitely go pick it up. I'm going to give you the plot line in a really small gist because I want you to really go find out what happens. So the whole set consensus is our main character's name is Stefania and she lives in Poland right now and it's 1943. That should give you an idea that it's in World War II and if that was your guess, then your guess is correct. So she's Catholic and she works for this family that is Jewish. So when the Jewish family that she works for, they get basically shoved into a ghetto because it's World War II and Germans apparently hate the Jews, then She's left all alone, Stefania is, to care for her younger sister. So she's caring for her sister in German-occupied Poland, this little Catholic girl that doesn't want to basically step out of line, when the family that she's working for, one of the sons actually escapes and gets back to where Stefania is. So this son is Jewish, and basically he's not even supposed to be anywhere close to Stefania, so Stefani starts hiding these Jews that come in along with the first um, family member that basically ran back from the concentration camp, the runaway train, and she's hiding them all. So obviously this is a huge problem with the Germans, but the Germans don't know about it. So it's like this really interesting, kind of suspenseful taste of a book because she's hiding all like 13 Jews in her upper floors of her house and she expects not to get caught or killed. So she's just kind of waiting and when two Nazis show up and they want to basically clear the house for some purpose of theirs, now she has two Nazis living below and 13 Jews above. So she's kind of in a pickle right now. So go find out what happens. It's a really cool story. It's factual based, not really like a story story. Not like one of my favorite like historical fiction books, but it's got a really, really, really good true story aspect to it. So definitely go pick up one, pick this one up. I'm only going to give you two things that I like about this one. Not because I think it's any less than a five star, but just because I think that it's so factual based that 
it's hard to pick up on story elements. So the first terrific thing I'm going to give you is the fact that there was an amount of bravery in here that was showcased to no end. The bravery of Stevania in this book set an example and definitely set a moral tone, a good moral tone to the reader. I like that. It set a good example for what we should be like, even though we're not living in Nazi-occupied Poland, hiding 13 Jews and two Nazis in our houses. So I loved the bravery aspect. And the second one you've heard me mention before, but I definitely love the aspect it was a true story. It's kind of hard to take a fiction book and turn it into a true story, but that's kind of what they did here. And to even classify that as a young adult, that's even harder. So I definitely give a lot of credit to this author. I'm looking into a few more books by her because I kind of like her writing style. And therefore, I'm going to give it a solid five-star review. Please go and check this one out. It is a true story with a lot of factual-based bravery and it's just so authentic to the time period. So please go check it out no matter who you are. Definitely appropriate. Maybe just watch out for how much World War II you're into because this is a factual based story. So go check this one out and stay with me. The, the video is not over. I just want to send you off with some seasoning greetings. So wait for just a few more minutes, hopefully just one or two, and I'll send you on your merry way. So thank you for tuning in. And on to the next part. Hello everyone, and this is the final part of the video. Thanks for tuning in this far. Hope you enjoyed today's review. It's getting a little bit shorter than it usually is, but I feel like I'm just kind of rambling at some point. So I hope you enjoy this this shorter reviews with the dynamic visual elements instead. Thank you for tuning in to The Light in Hidden Places by Sharon Cameron. I just forgot her last name, and that's written right here. Thank you for tuning in. This is gonna be the last video that I'm going to release for the 2020 year. So, can't believe it's gonna be 2021 in less than two weeks. I cannot wait for it to start this new year. I wanna send you off with, with some holiday greetings. I actually want to bring up the point that this is a good book to end on because I feel like this title really just speaks to our time period. So I definitely want to say if 2020 hasn't gone your way, I I sympathize with you. It hasn't gone my way either. Definitely some things I did plan on happening didn't really want to happen either. However, I'm trying to look for the bright, positive, optimistic route here. So take this book, take the bravery of Stefania that you see here and just be brave in your own life. I find that that's really encouraging to see characters that you want to just grow up to be like. So definitely take some pearls from this book um, and make this Christmas season, although a little bit different, merry for you, your friends, and your family. So a couple quick reminders, go follow my Instagram page at N-A-T-T-I-E-S dot nook, N-O-O-K. Please go follow that account. It's got a lot of the updates. I'm gonna start being active on there more. I've done a pretty terrible job so far, but that's not an accurate representation of where I wanna go. So please go check that out. Second of all, please subscribe if you're not already subscribed. I know you have to have a YouTube account to actually subscribe, but it's free and I feel like it's worth it. It really lets me know that, oh, I like your videos. I wanna stay tuned for more. So please hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. And like and dislike the videos that you care for or didn't care for, and please start dropping comments. I want this new year to bring some new distinct features, new additions, so please drop comments on my Instagram page, on my videos, and tell me what you think, because it's kind of silent on my end, and I really don't know what you'll think of my videos unless you comment on them or DM me or message me. I'm here for you guys. If you also have any book recommendations, chat up to me on Instagram, you can also email me. My email's in the description box. And please, please, please start getting me your favorite books just so this channel isn't all about my favorite reads. It can be about your favorite reads too. So with that being said, I hope you have a merry and blessed season and that we come back in 2020 with some brand new books to cheer up your year. So thanks for tuning in and I'll see you all next year. Bye!